All right. Well, welcome to another Prophecy Update. My name is Marco, and I want to thank you for joining us on this video. I've been away for a couple of weeks, and uh, which I took the time away to be with my family, to study and to research, and uh, but just really been focusing on studying scripture, teaching, and, and researching. And we haven't done a Prophecy Update in a, in a few months, and I just wanted to uh, get back into doing Prophecy Updates. Again, uh, researching on, on current events and what's going on in the world, how they relate to the scripture and prophecy. And um, today we're just going to focus on one thing, which is our technological world. We live in a techno world. There's no doubt about that. Society is rapidly changing due to the emergence of technology. And we've all heard about AI and some of the changes that AI is making uh, in the world. They're, make, they're changing the world and it's growing exponentially. And it absolutely, in some fields, it's quite scary. In fact, um, we read about technocrats and uh, these, um, we call them elitists, we call them elite uh, group of people and elitist class that eventually want to bring about a technological world, a, a, a change in society, a change that would radically transform society in the technological world. And some of these, in, some of these technology advancements are going to change the way we deal with not only society, people, each other, uh, but what also it's going to change our worldview how we look at the, uh, the Bible, the future of humanity, and it's a new paradigm. And so we'll eventually, what the technocrats say, and, and many of um, even governments and, and, and people in technological uh, fields, that there's going to be uh, artificial intelligence will change jobs. And uh, the first jobs that are going to be changing is the working class, which we haven't seen too many of that. But uh, one area that is really uh, changing. It's actually in Hollywood. Hollywood is completely freaked out over AI. Uh, some of the white collar jobs like journalists and doctors and lawyers uh, are going to be changing. And they already said that this is going to change. And they can program and different iterations of AI are going to change the way we, uh, the way people work and the way people uh, interact in their different uh, jobs. We, we've seen it in Hollywood, as we mentioned earlier, and they put um, writers out of business. In fact, it's going to replace many of the jobs entirely. In fact, the Writers Guild, they're right now on strike. And they are, uh, studios are very much in concern about the way AI is generating scripts, is generating um, images of actors and actresses, and uh, their stunt doubles are going to be just basically CGI. So when we talk about artificial intelligence, one thing that's really interesting is the whole paradigm is transhumanism. We kind of look at AI as like the pinnacle of transhumanism. And transhumanism is simply a, a term that was coined by uh, Julian Huxley way back in the 50s. And Julian Huxley basically had this idea that um, he was basically building on the back of eugenesis and to perfect humanity, to perfect human culture, to bring about a more excellent way. And um, in, in a lot of ways, these, these ideas uh, gave way to what we call transhumanism today. Uh, the idea that you can actually change humanity and become better. And eventually these things uh, change the way we look at humanity and that we could evolve into some kind of godhood state, which is very interesting because that's what basically the scripture talks about, that angels, and in fact, one fallen angel, Satan, wanted to be like God and, and persuaded humanity to become like God. So I find that very interesting that this is the, the beginning of transhumanism with Huxley, that eugenesis and eventually transhumanism are going to be the directors of evolution. This is way back in 1956 when we didn't even have computers necessarily available for the, the, the average person. But technology is the center focus. Long before Huxley, eugenicists believed that perfecting humanity um, was the key. Uh, they were talking about robots, and, and these robots were replace humanity. You had shows in the 50s and 60s dealing with this, and they would just basically augment the bodies uh, of, of humans. Uh, people like Alan Turing, which is a very famous mathematician, uh, believed that they would be able to create superhuman intelligence. This is way back in the 50s. So the forefathers and the pioneers of what we see today, um, they built uh, they built this idea of transhumanism. The idea that we're seeing today uh, were built way back in the 50s. 
and they, they have this idea of like Greek ideas of demigods that eventually will be able to create superhuman intelligence. Now, one of the pioneers of this in, in, in terms of his, it's, uh, as a thinker and think tanks was a guy named uh, Ray Kurzweil. He's still around, and he believed that we can make humanity into a more omnipotent and omniscient type of individuals, sort of a godlike figure. Now, before there was Yuval Harari, there was Ray Kurzweil. And Ray Kurzweil uh, basically coined a lot of the terms that we use today. And he's seen as one of the great thinkers of transhumanism. Now, he's an atheist, but he yet believes that maybe he'll believe in God one day, which is really interesting to me. Uh, they tell you not to believe in God, but they actually believe that they could become their own God. Now, Yuval Harari, uh, the, the, the guy from the World Economic Forum, and many people know him already, uh, very famous with a lot of clips. We talked about him extensively here, uh, Prophecy Updates and Catching Up with Jacob. And he talks about that he doesn't believe in the supernatural, not in the Judeo-Christian God, but he believes that he can, that people can become God, that will eventually ascend to some godhood stage due to technology. Kurz will believe the same thing. Yes, when we are sitting here, we have an implant in our uh, brains. And um, I can immediately feel, because you all will have implants, I can, and we measure your, your brain waves, and I can immediately tell you how the people react, or I can feel uh, how the people react um, to your answers. Uh, is it imaginable? That within, say, 50 years, people will literally be part of a network. All the bodies, all the brains would be connected together to a network, and you won't be able to survive if you're disconnected from the net, because your own body parts, your own immune system, perhaps depends on being constantly connected to the colony, to the network. The new powers that we are gaining now, especially the powers of biotechnology and artificial intelligence, are really going to transform us into gods. So I don't think this is going away. I don't think this is a phase or a fad. I think these elitists and globalists really believe that humanity is going to transcend. Uh, we're going to transcend beyond our mortal bodies into eternal some kind of eternal state. They want immortality. Now, it's interesting to me that the Bible speaks of immortality as only being uh, coming from God and through the gospel and not through any means of humanity, uh, which is basically the, 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 the contradiction of humanity. Can humanity ascend to uh, a transcendent state where they become immortal? Well, they're going to try to do it through technology. And we're on the road, I believe, what the book of Revelation speaks about. Now, there's some people that don't believe the scriptures. Obviously, a lot of people don't believe scripture in America. We have um, left our heritage and don't believe in, um, in, in the Judeo-Christian scriptures. Uh, but I don't know how long is it going to take for this these things to evolve more and more to what the book of Revelation speaks about. So uh, I believe these things are on the road to it. I don't believe it's now. Or, or, or tomorrow that things, the book of Revelation is going to come to uh, fulfillment. But I do believe we're on the road to that. We're redefining humanity into a digital humanity. These global leaders want to create humanity in their own image because they want to create God. Uh, but in the process, they really don't understand that if they keep creating this eventually, and this is what the Bible speaks about, they'll create a system in which a man will enslave all of humanity and humanity will be basically a slave to a system that they created. And eventually they will serve the, the beast. That's what the Bible speaks about. So I remember making videos about this years ago, uh, but so much has happened ever since uh, uh, we talked about this in 2014, 2015, 2016. So much has happened so fast. And, um, you know, things like the World Economic Forum that we didn't really knew too much about before. Uh, like uh, Klaus Schwab and, and Yuval Harari uh, or other ones that are related to the World Economic Forum, like Parak Kana. Uh, those have said that there will be robots and, and corporations will run the government and governments will run the corporation because they basically will be one in the same. 
these are the same World Economic Forum that have brought us this idea that you will own nothing and you will be happy, uh, or the fourth industrial revolution that Klaus Schwab uh, wrote about in terms of how the world's going to look like in the future. Uh, he spoke about chips and, and planted in human brains, uh, which is a, big, a very big idea now with neural links. But Klaus Schwab, even his daughter, uh, has threatened uh, even this week about lockdowns, lockdowns in the whole world, whether we like it or not. So these are chilling threats over humanity because they believe they are the chief engineers of humanity. They can direct evolution, and evolution is going to direct into uh, the new form of humanity, a greater humanity. Obviously, they're speaking mainly of themselves because they do not think that the useless eaters, something that uh, Hitler uh, spoke about and wrote about, that there are people that are not worthy to live, that they, they feel very much the same way, whether they, they look at climate lockdowns, whether they look at uh, changing the way people work and economies and energy. Uh, in his book, actually, The Fourth Industrial Revolution, which is basically uh, uh, very telling the way Klaus Schwab speaks about digital implants. So everybody will be tracked like a package. And it's quite interesting. I worked in supply chain for many years, many, many years. Uh, I know the industry pretty well. And uh, we used to have this RFID chips into packages and we can track pretty much any package and, and it, it totally changed supply chain when this RFID chips came into the picture in early 2000s. Uh, there were some iterations of that early, late 90s, but it would be a system. It was a system that was built to, to basically track every package in the world to know, uh, to become more efficient. And this is how they see humanity uh, as basically a number, like a system. And, and the Bible speaks about the beast, the beast system, which would, everybody would be numbered. Humanity would be numbered and humanity would be tracked and controlled. And the chipping of humanity, it's, it's, I've seen the headlines, it is, it's all over the place. Uh, we're going to take the chips, says ABC. So um, this is, again, the World Economic Forum in its latest iterations. And they, they've been talking about 15-minute cities. They've been talking about climate lockdowns. They've been talking about everything you need is going to be within a five-mile radius. In Oxfordshire, in the UK, uh, they have a council to try uh, a trial on climate lockdowns. Uh, but biohacking and chipping is a big part of the World Economic Forum. And, and even before we became aware of everything that they were planning on doing over the next few years, heading into 2030, uh, companies like Biohacks or Walletmore, uh, this were, these are companies that basically are providing uh, people with chips in their bodies, uh, thousands of people that would like to have uh, chips in their body, even uh, an American politician, Slotan Isban, which has become famous because he, he's chipped. And there's more people weighing in at this idea of the benefits of actually being chips. There are people that are called modern cyborgs that they put Wi-Fi antennas or enhancing their bodies to become more efficient, to condu, uh, more like conduits of electricity. Well, when this is happening, at the same time this is happening, we also have a interesting company called WorldCoin, and WorldCoin has taken it a step further. And we've talked about this on our updates in the past, as well as uh, catching up with Jacob just recently, as well as last year, where they were really just on trial runs, um, basically taking information, uh, bio, uh, I guess you said biometrics, the retinal. Uh, scan and you look into this orb and and so people have made a joke about this evil orb and it, it is it is interesting that it's actually an orb uh, but you look into the orb and over two million people have now been processed I think it's uh, one every eight seconds uh, the people that have been um, gone through this system and they've looked into the orb and then basically created a international world database. Sam, Alt, Sam Altman, which is the founder of the company of WorldCoin, he's also the founder, uh, co-founder of OpenAI, who brought us Chatbot GBT, which is AI. And uh, Sam Altman is talking about the fact that, look, you're going to have to prove your identity uh, at some point in the future. And therefore, this, uh, this retinal scan, this biometric data going into a system where you're going to be proven that you're a human, it's going to be maintained by AI and it's going to be cataloged by AI. Everybody in the world, that's their goal. 
uh, WorldCoin ID system is basically for your benefit, for your privacy, because you at some point you're going to have to prove your identity and you're going to have to prove the fact that you're not a robot online. And this is quite interesting because uh, who created the problem? It was artificial intelligence and robotics and, and transhumanism, this idea that you can transcend humanity. So uh, the idea of the chatbot GPT is trying to solve, uh, uh, Sam Altman and WorldCoin is trying to solve a problem that they created. Um, obviously, it's ironic. It's designed. And WorldCoin is going to share its ID system with governments. Basically, the idea of that somebody's going to watch over your data, well, who's going to do it? Who are you going to trust to actually watch over your data? Well, according to Sam Altman, it's going to be you. But Sam Altman has been also been quoted about working with the, with the CCP government, which is a big fan of, to, uh, to work with the, within the system that they're trying to create, which, again, it leads to lots of holes. In fact, the ambition um, of, of OpenAI to bring chatbot GPT or, or WorldCoin is to bring about universal basic income, which is basically a, a technocratic idea. It's, it's not a political idea, but it's a technocratic idea, not socialism, not communism, not fascism. It's simply technocracy to bring about a, a world where you have a, a group of technocrats, a group of leaders, uh, technological leaders, and that's been underway for some time. And now we're seeing the fruition. And regulators and privacy campaigners have very, very deep concerns about WorldCoin's data collection. So uh, for how many coins are going to give you if you put your information, you let them you know, scan your retina, uh, it, it's still very much a, a concern for a lot of uh, campaigners of, of privacy. So it's not completely private. And this biometric data can be used, can be stored, can be deleted, and can be encrypted, they say. But it is, has a lot of holes. It has a lot of things that they need to answer. So we've covered this before with WorldCoin, but we also cover things that are going on outside of WorldCoin, which is like Amazon, which is rolling out their palm payment system, which is basically, uh, it's going to be rolled out in Whole Foods. Whole Foods is going to roll out, I think it's 500 plus stores of Whole Foods are going to have the palm system, which is basically you you basically at the palm of your hand, you just scan your hand and you'll be able to pay for your groceries, you're able to pay at Whole Foods. Now it's going to be in beta testing in several different entertainment venues, stadiums, concerts, airports. And uh, this has been coming on and evolving first with the RFID and the people have accepted this. Remember when RFID came in and, and it was on packages and it was on clothing. It was just a way to track inventory. Well, now people are being tracked people are, are basically inventory and people are just a number. People are just animals. And what's interesting is that technocracy and its advancement AI it, it is not affiliated with political parties. I know people want to uh, assimilate this idea that it's, it's only the left. It's only the extreme left wing ideologies. Uh, in fact, uh, it, it, it doesn't have a party. Those on the left, they do want to push you will own nothing and be happy. That is absolutely true. But the scariest thing, it's among the intellectuals like Ray Kurzweil or Ben Gertzel, uh, uh, that basically are the intellectuals. A lot of the ones, the younger ones, we would say, that uh, things like the uh, effective acceleration movement, they're not part of the left. They're, they're more actually in the center. I wouldn't even say they're right wing necessarily, but I guess you can call them libertar libertarian. Uh, someone like Peter Thiel, who's more on the conservative side. There's a lot to be said about Peter Thiel, co-founder of PayPal, but he's also uh, a lover of AI. And the and he gave a speech at the Oxford Union regarding the city of God and how he sees AI as being some kind of renaissance. And he's concerned about AI, but he's also the founder of Palantir, which is a powerful, powerful AI system, which is to identify and surveillance uh, the enemy home and abroad. And there's groups like the optimalism, the accelerationism, which is basically neither right nor left nor center. Uh, they're simply not in any political uh, spectrum, you would say. Uh, they're, they're not even elitist per se, but they are techno technocrats. 
that really want to bring about a different world. They want to change the world, which is either the acceleration movement, which is basically talks about the, the, the information will speed up and, and changes will happen very quickly. Or the optimalism, which they seek to have more efficiency and um, a better world, you would say, through technology. All these things remind me of the book of Daniel, chapter 12, which speaks about knowledge will increase. Not only knowledge of the world, but knowledge of the word of God as well. As we get closer to the time of the return of Christ, we're going to know things. We're going to see things. But the world is also going to have an acceleration of information and knowledge will increase. Now, and speaking of all this, about the optimalist, the accelerationism, uh, about those who want the, the effective acceleration movement, you can't leave out the fact that people really talk about one person when it comes to this, it's Elon Musk. And in a lot of ways, Elon Musk gets a pass from the left, gets a pass from the right in the political ideology, also the ones in the center, uh, give him a pass because he's for free speech. He bought Twitter. He let people back on that were originally censored. Now I think Twitter's called X. And all these things that he is for make people think that he is actually like a liberator, some kind of savior uh, of humanity. And he's well-liked by the left, by the right, by the center. But realize this, at the end of the day, he's a transhumanist. He's probably the most famous transhumanist, uh, a technocrat for sure, but he has his own AI aspirations. He calls it XAI, or in his own terms, honest AI, because his mission is to explore the secrets of the universe. Uh, a curious AI, he calls it, because it wants to be politically uh, incorrect. doesn't like the political correctness and the leftists and the woke ideologies of chatbot GPT. And it's quite interesting that the left and the right really love him. And, and, and at the end of the day, I, th I see Elon Musk as being uh, all things to all men. I'm not saying he's the Antichrist, but he sure sounds like somebody that could be an Antichrist. And um, he will, the Antichrist will do, or basically he will be all things to all men, very much like Musk. And he's building a competitor to China, but at the same time, he's praised by the CCP. He he went to um, he went to China recently. He was loved by the CCP, and it was not reported in the U.S. media. In fact, they didn't even talk about it in the U.S. media. Uh, but they love them there, and it kind of makes you wonder if the CCP really loves this man. Why? Uh, he's a man for for all seasons, I guess you can call it. He is a man that's politically uh, goes with the wind. He sees the populism is uh, uh, it's growing strong, so he goes in that direction. But I don't see a uh, a moral center in terms of his life. Uh, I know Harari speaks of you know they're going to chip people, people are going to transcend into into gods and all the things that the World Economic Forum says, which is true. They do say that and they do believe that. But you know one thing about Elon Musk, he's actually doing it. He's got AI. He's building his own AI. He has Neuralink which has been approved already, the testing by the, uh, by the FDA. So uh, don't be swayed by the fact that he's loved by humanity because he's a for free speech. There's a lot of things I do agree with them, but there's a lot of things that are very, very dangerous. Now, speaking of Harari, if you remember back in 2020 at the Athens Democracy Forum, and this is a video that's well remembered, he talks about that it, the, the, the surveillance going to go under the skin and just like uh, the virus came in and gave him the, the, the opportunity to bring surveillance and technology and digital. Well, the rest of the video, uh, which is interesting, uh, he talks about that the reason why this is a problem to bring surveillance under the skin and uh, going digital is that it literally builds, it literally builds a biometric surveillance security state that if it ever fell into the hands of totalitarian governments, let's say a Stalin or a Hitler in the 21st century, and actually said when a Stalin or a Hitler rises in the 21st century, he will have the infrastructure, he says, that is beyond the wildest dreams of a totalitarian, a totalitarian, uh, totalitarian dictator of the 20th century. And he spoke a lot about Stalin, which is kind of interesting to me. The next Stalin, the next Hitler, but he focused more on Stalin. Well, if you think about Stalin and you think about 21st century, well, you have the CCP, you have the a social credit score, uh, you have Google that you know 1.5 billion people are under some kind of score 
India is building its own social credit score. Uh, now it's coming. It's not something, it's not even something that's coming, I should say. It's something that's already here. And uh, half the world, you would say, by population, may be under a social, social credit score uh, sooner than later. Now, at this point, people become afraid, they get concerned, and they wonder, is there a solution? They look for political solutions. Congress, uh, there's been some some Congress members who have addressed the dangers of AI, and, and there's been some companies that have gone and testified before Congress that this is not good, and uh, th there needs to be some kind of restraint, which is always interesting to me, how which company is going to restrain and pull back on, on, on the advancements of technology and, and, and how fast it's growing, which country is going to do that and fall behind. I don't think many companies want to fall behind. I don't think many countries and companies want to fall behind because all it takes is one company or one country to fully go ahead and accelerate and become the one that will have intelligence, uh, artificial intelligence, and looking for general intelligence, which is what they believe is the next iteration and artificial intelligence. Now, one thing that's going to become really interesting, I was reading an article about Google's mind reading AI, which is BARD, and uh, they, they can tell what music you listen to based on your brain signals. And this is a big thing regarding AI. It's, it's going to become very important. Neural rights, neural rights, it's going to become very easy or easier, I should say, to read people's brain patterns. So brain-computer interface already used in video games and cognitive therapy, OpenAI, Microsoft, and Google are really pushing this agenda. And, and you know, the idea that AI can read your brain, the brain pattern, uh, they've done testing where AI can actually uh, know based on your brain patterns what image you're thinking, what image you saw, uh, whether somebody looked at a screen and, 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 and looked at a giraffe and then the image uh, of a giraffe, it's um, it's constructed by AI without anyone saying a word. They can just look at the brain pattern. It's quite quite amazing to think that cognitive therapy has gone this far. And so um, Google's mind reading AI can tell what music you listen to. And at some point, these neural rights, these neural rights are going to be very important in terms of uh, what you're thinking and who owns those those uh, those brain patterns because uh, all it is is to an AI it's just brain patterns it's data and it puts it together and it comes up with an answer so people are going to have to make decisions and this is the the the, the real key part of this more and more parents are concerned about AI but and again more and more parents are turning to AI for tutoring for their children and so less and less emphasis on teaching children, even though parents are concerned. So how do you make decisions if you're a parent, if, you're, if, if your child is young and you're going into this world where technology is rapidly changing, people are going to have to make decisions about what they allow in their lives. Uh, obviously, paying with your hand and being chipped can be something that you don't like. But what about your smartphone? What about people that, that live in the smartphones and, um, and are addicted to it? And on behalf of your children, and and what, uh, how much exposure do you give your children, and how much do they live in it? Because that's really all the world, uh, all of the world that they know. It's a technological world. So society is changing, and and there's a global transformation in our culture. Make no doubt about it. Whether we like it or not, whether I like it, you like it, civilization is changing. Our culture is changing. There's going to be lots of questions that are coming up. And people are going to be asking questions about worldviews and, and, and the future and how do we adapt to this new system. Well, it's interesting. The CCP is developing uh, technology that I think it's called Shape Eye Program and City Brains that can identify uh, people that do wrong. Um, and basically, and, and it works as a way of surveillance and control, which is you think about in one way, people say, well, that's really good because it deters crime. It deters wrongdoers. Uh, I think they're called city brains that they that they determine, but through AI, your social credit score. But what if those wrongdoers are simply people that don't agree with the totalitarian government? People ought to be aware of what is coming and how they seek to bring surveillance and ultimate control into your life through artificial intelligence, censorship, digital currency, which is a whole other subject that we're going to be talking about at another video. And people become so fearful 
and they stop seeking the truth. In fact, uh, I did watch a video of how uh, the German banker who's talking about surveillance and uh, digital currency. And I think we're going to be talking more about that at another video regarding how they're going to digitize and tokenize everything in the world. We talked a little bit about that on Catching Up with Jacob. So the next step in the trans movement, uh, in, the, in, the, in the trans movement of today, it's going to be transhumanism. So whatever we think of trans, trans surgery, transgenderism, the next step is going to be transhumanism. Make no mistake about it. Digitization of the personality uh, has already been happening. Uh, just like um, a board member at the Mayo Clinic who basically talked about from transhumanism, from transgenderism to transhumanism. This is actually true. Uh, and it talks about how, you know, just like you separate the personality from the body, you have a person and that personality it's going to be detached from the body. Whenever there's a transgender surgery, there's a there's a there's a separation from the person to from the, from the from the person who they are as a personality uh, and an individual from their own body. And now there's going to be a disassociation from the person and their soul, meaning that uh, their soul is going to become digitized through the transhumanism. Because now it's not going to be the person anymore, the personality anymore. It's going to be a digital creation, some kind of uh, iteration of humanity. And what makes a person a person is going to change. And this is something even atheists, doctors, and professors have, have already thought of in terms of the next iteration of the trans movement. It's interesting that it's happening all within our day. Uh, I, I was reminded of Aleister Crowley. And you think of why would it bring Aleister Crowley when we're talking about technology and transhumanism, it is interesting what he wrote. And what he wrote early on as he was channeling, I believe demonically possessed, he was channeling a demon, when he said the spirit of the age in the future is neither going to be male nor female. It's going to be uh, a hermaphrodite, hermaphroditic. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, it's going to be hermaphrodite, neither male nor female. And that's going to be the spirit of the age. And he followed it up by, of course, the law of Thelema, which is do what thou wilt. And so many things wrong with Crowley. I and mean, there's, there's a whole episode that we can do. And Alistair Crowley, I think other ministries have done a very good job in exposing him and his influence on uh, music, on culture, especially uh, from the 60s and 70s and 80s. And even to this day, many groups, many rock groups are very influenced by Aleister Crowley. And he was uh, very much had a thing for children, which won't get into uh, unless they censor this video. Uh, but he deeply touched culture and deeply touched many music groups that uh, deeply touch society. And uh, it, it is interesting that when he was channeling the spirit, he talked about this idea that it's not going to be male or female in the future, but a hermaphrodite, sort of like the, the idea of the satanic temples. And, and you see this baphomet, which is uh, neither man nor, nor female, has characteristics of both. So transhumanism is in our culture. And it's a worldview. It's a paradigm that uh, it's in our current culture. And there's a spiritual component to it. Make no mistake about it. We talk about technology, techn technocrats, culture, society, but there's a spiritual component. Notice how they speak of the, the, the AI system as demonic, as spiritual, as transcendent into gods. Like we don't need even Harari talking about, well, Jesus is not coming in the clouds. I'm just going to th think about the Apple cloud or the Microsoft cloud. Uh, transhumanism is something that is deep embedded in society already, and especially among the young people. And the futurists are bringing this idea that humanity is going to change uh, and, and be recreated in their own image, which makes the scriptures very relevant because humanity is made in the image and likeness of our creator, God. The, the futurists and all these transhumanists, they believe they're going to create their own society. They're going to become gods. They're going to have eternal life uh, through technology. They're going to live on in immortality without God. Uh, they have a big surprise ahead of them. Uh, I think there'll be people that will go along with these fantasies that they're putting before us. And we're seeing that in our world today. Uh, now, there's people that are uh, questioning and concerned about their families, about their children, where this is going. And 
of course, because of um, losing their jobs, AI taking the jobs and what's going to look like the future is a lot of concern. And rightly so. I think this is about is something that we uh, we've never had to deal with this in humanity ever. And I think the scriptures give us uh, not only the encouragement and the strength to deal with it, but it also tells us about the future and what the future holds. So I, I think bottom line is artificial intelligence is going to be a, a tool of transhumanism. That's really the, at the core of it. And it's an invention that is going to be crafted in a way to push for control, uh, not only control of your life, but surveillance, economic control. And uh, and people need to get a, be aware of it. And um, they should become quickly dominated by it. And so what do we do? And it's, it's so, so many times we, we pose questions and, and we bring facts and we bring ideas and, and we talk about the scriptures, but uh, people want to know what they should do. Should they run away? Should they hide out? Should they? Well, there's a lot of things you could do in the meantime. As Christians, we want to make people aware that things are happening, not to panic them, not to uh, have them run for the hills, as it were, uh, but to just see the world in a light of scripture that is changing, the dangers of these movements and how rapidly society is changing, how rapidly uh, governments are adopting this and using it, as you saw the last three years, and using technology and surveillance to really lock people down. So we see the current events in technology and the spiritual side of transhumanism very much correlating to, I believe, the book of Revelation, which ultimately ultimately speaks of those who rejected Christ will have to deal with the Antichrist, false prophet, the image of the beast, and the mark of the beast. These are the things that the Bible speaks about. Now, currently, this Bible speaks about that the spirit of Antichrist is seducing people away from Christ. Now, as Christians, we, we hold to the fact that we have to continue on in faith in Jesus Christ, to continue and persevere, and knowing that ultimately the Antichrist and false prophet will be on the scene and the image of the beast and the mark of the beast will be on the scene. But ultimately, we put our trust in God that he sent his son, Jesus. Not only the fact that he, uh, he offers the hope of the world by dying for our sins and rising from the dead to give us eternal life. And he, at his coming, will destroy the system of the beast and the beast himself and the false prophet. And so we ultimately don't offer a technological, political, or social salvation, but rather a spiritual as well as physical salvation from our sins, from the power of Satan, and from the judgment to come. We, we offer the hope of the world in the person of Jesus, the Messiah. And as I, as I said earlier, who is the one who died and rose again and, and died to give us eternal life. So we believe God wrote history in advance. We believe that history is written in advance in the pages of Scripture. That's why we endeavor to read, to study, to teach, and to reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for watching, and God bless you. We'll see you next time.